welcome today lecture 47 uh, we will continue our discussion on heterojunction bipolar transistor. If you recall we talked about the benefits of HBT over just a plain silicon BJT in terms of the benefit in uh, beta we get despite doping the base or diameter very high uh, we do not suffer from the effects of uh, band gap narrowing because there is a huge discontinuity between the emitter and the base and that helps boost the beta up ok. So, we talked about a special kind of HBT also is with a type 2 heterojunction alignment where you have a launcher electrons can be launched from the base to the collector and that helps improve the cutoff frequency significantly as we will see subsequently in uh, slides ok. So, over to the whiteboard here. So, we are we are talking about a graded HBT also where you know the base emitter junction can be graded you know the base emitter junction is graded and in case of the base emitter junction being graded which means there is no abrupt discontinuity you gradually grade this you know from this composition to this composition you gradually grade it ok. In that case the back injection component which is undesirable is suppressed by e to the power delta e j by k t which is even better I told you already ok. So, in this table for instance we do not have to go through everything in the table, but the higher the discontinuity between the emitter and the base which is this the better is the beta a higher will be the beta because this quantity is that. So, in an L gas gas heterojunction if this is your L gas and this is your gas then depending on the composition of x in L gas your the, the band gap discontinuity will be 1.247 times x where x has to be less than 0.445 because above that it will not hold true. Similarly, indium phosphide and indium, gal indium gallium arsenide 53 percent indium 47 percent gallium this is a classic combination of emitter and p type base. It gives you 0 0.6 electron volt of discontinuity between emitter and base. Indium aluminum arsenide of this composition which indium gallium arsenide of this composition gives you 0 0.71 electron volt of band discontinuity it is incredible you see e to the power 0 0.71 by 0 0.026 this is around e to the power you know it is probably close to 30 or 25 ok e to the power 25 or e to the power 30 or e to the power 25 and you know e square is close to 10. So, this is like 10 to the power 12 it is it is crazy large number which means your beta can be 10 to the power 12 it is an insanely large number in reality of course, you would not get that because of many other effects, but you will still get a very 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 large beta ok. In reality you do not get that because in a highly scaled uh, modern HBT there are many parasitic components that come into picture ok. There are many parasitic components that come specifically the capacitances even the intrinsic capacitances can be very large the diffusion capacitance can be very large. So, all of this affect the cutoff frequency for instance and even the beta the beta may not be as large as you theoretically expect, but it is still very very large do not get me wrong ok. So, this is an example of a different layers of an HBT. So, these are emitter layers this last layer is not present in an abrupt HBT, but in a graded HBT this is there. So, the emitter n type doping is being the doping is not graded the composition is being graded from 0 percent aluminum to 30 percent aluminum ok it is graded ok and you see it is 517 this is per centimeter cube of doping. The top all these are here for making the contact resistance and the emitter resistance lower for ease of electron injection from the emitter contact to the emitter material all these layers are there you know it is a very low band gap highly doped material than gas than L gas you do not want abrupt discontinuities and so you have all these different band engineering. But this is your emitter then your base is this p type base which is 4 into 19 doped ok and it is 100 nanometer it is 1000 angstrom or 100 nanometer. Then you have a collector which is just 3 into 16 doped 10 to 16 lightly doped it is 700 nanometer then you have a sub collector which is 600 nanometer it is 5 into 10 to 18 doped and then below that you have a semi insulating gallium arsenide substrate. So, the substrate unlike silicon is semi insulating in this case ok. Uh, high resistive silicon that you can buy is not truly resistive at high frequencies it become, become behaves more like a conductor actually at really high frequencies. So, but semi insulating gallium arsenide is excellent even at high frequencies. So, uh, this is your typical stack and you can see that if you have an abrupt doping profile uh, then you are going to get a better actually uh, suppression of back injection. So, let us take a calculation if I just use a silicon BJT with this particular parameters then your ratio of the collector current to the back injected current which also affects the beta is only 0 0.16 which is lower than 1 it means the back injected current is actually more than the forward injected current that is going into the collector it is actually not a transistor it is a it is a terrible non working device. 
okay, if for this particular kind of doping profile, which means you cannot have these thicknesses and doping profile in a silicon BJT. However, if you use an abrupt junction, you are going to get a ratio of 97, great, that also corresponds to like a beta, you can say, it, it will affect beta. And then this in a graded profile, it will be 10 to the power 5, which is incredibly large. So, a graded doping, a graded compositionally graded base emitter junction is always the best. Okay. So, the graded layer is always used uh, you know in, in this high performance HBTs for instance. In an HBT, there are 5 different base components, base current components. The base current has 5 components. Number 1 component is the back injected component that we already talked about which is this. Number 2 component is the bulk base recombination current which is the actual base current, the base Recom because the electrons that are injected from emitter they will recombine in the base. So, that is the base recombination current okay, which is this the true base current. Then because the base contact is on the side the current has to the flow in this direction no. So, this surface the surface can induce recombination the electrons or the holes they can in this case the holes are injected you, you can say the electrons are injected from emitter they are recombining in the base some of them some of them are coming out of the base contact. Okay. They can recombine in the surface there will be defects, moisture, dangling bonds. You can passivate this and that will suppress it significantly. But if you do not passivate it, the surface defects, dangling bonds, moisture, etc. can recombine then can lead to recombination of the carriers and that gives rise to the IB surf. In fact, the first the world's first HBT that was fabricated if I recall in either Bell Labs or IBM long back. They want they were expecting a beta of 10,000 based on the simple theory but they got a beta of like some 10 or 20 that is because of the surface recombination. After they passivated the surface with an appropriate passivation layer to reduce the surface uh, leakage they got a significantly higher beta. Okay. The this is the third component. The fourth component is that in the base emitter junction you have a small depletion which is also called space charge region and in that space charge region you have a generation recombination current whenever in a PN junction you have a you have a PN junction there is always going to be generation recombination current which we typically ignore but for the sake of completion we can always say that is the base uh, recombination or the, the space charge recombination current at the base emitter depletion. And the last current component is the base contact current which is here below the base contact the current also might recombine before flowing out of the base. Before the carriers flow out of the base they might still recombine below the base because of the imperfect metal to semiconductor contact they may recombine that is your base contact recombination current. Okay. I already talked about the current crowding effect okay. and uh, you see this is the thing the current gain without a uh, without passivation falls off like that you know it is like 30 or 40 with passivation the current can go up to like 10,000, 1000 okay. and this is a collector current by the way. Okay, with higher collector current your beta goes up no that is the whole thing. So, with passivation it makes a very important difference if your if your recombination the true recombination current is the major current comp component and I already told you the ratio of the collector current by that base current of which the major component is this which is your current gain beta is given by the minority carrier lifetime divided by the base transit time and this I discussed in a few classes before okay. and this is your base transit time to a first order you also have to add x in this case they are calling it x b different textbooks use different things divided by v sat also comes into picture when you are talking about highly scaled bases and at really high frequencies when you want to kind of calculate the delay. Okay. Uh, large devices are immune to the base current component which you essentially need a large area to the perimeter ratio that is what you are saying. If you have a very small area and the perimeter is large then your sidewall leakage and the surface leakage component can be large that is what it means. Okay. All right. So, that is why you need a large uh, you need a large uh, area to perimeter ratio to minimize the surface current, but then again it will increase the capacitance. So, this is in conflicting requirement. Okay. Now, I already talked about the base quasi electric field which is that if you have a compositionally graded base you see the band gap here is large the band gap here is lower. So, because of the grading of the band gap and not because of the grading of the dope, uh, dopant you can create an electric field which is default there and electrons will experience an additional acceleration this will help reduce the transit time and help improve the cutoff frequency. But this notch is terrible it is terrible you do not want that because the electrons will accumulate here and it will not be able to go to the other side. So, you need to grade this junction also sometimes so that the notch is smoothened out and electrons can diffuse and then get swept away to the other side without any problem. So, you need to smoothen the spike out 
you cannot have a spike at the base collector junction. In silicon germanium HBT, we will come to that. The base is a silicon germanium HBT where the germanium composition is increased from the emitter side to the collector side over the base, it is increased. That gives you a field of around few tens of kilovolt per centimeter of extra additional field when you have a change of germanium composition from 0 to 8 percent for instance. We will talk about this in more details when you talk about silicon germanium HBT. However, in compound semiconductor HBTs the graded base has not been adopted in much commercial devices, but in military or strategic application they might still be used you cannot be sure, but this is used in silicon germanium HBTs because that helps you uh, significantly in getting better performance in silicon germanium HBT. Okay? Even without this HBTs can be still very fast in compound semiconductor, but in silicon germanium you need that. Okay. Now, the next thing to talk about is a collapse of the current gain and this is a very, very interesting and very critical concept. I am plotting the collector current output current with respect to the output voltage here, I am assuming this is a common emitter. You know it is a traditional uh, typical output characteristic except that there is two things here. One is the current is not saturating, it is coming down here like that. This is called NDR negative differential resistance which means with increasing voltage in this side your current is actually decreasing, it is like a negative resistance you can say. The rate of change of current with respect to voltage is negative that is why it is called NDR and this is because of heating. Although this could also become because of traps in compound semiconductors such as gallium nitride hems, but primarily this is a manifestation of heating. Okay. Now this part is a very interesting part, it is called the collapse of the current gain. What is happening is that when you have large currents in these devices and by large current I mean multi finger devices, you have multi finger emitter devices suppose. We have talked about multi finger Hampton FET, similarly there can be multi finger HBT, there have to be multi finger has to be multi finger HBT to carry higher current. So, this is emitter for instance and uh, then in your case the base will be in between, okay, the base will be in between. So, multi finger emitter base you know collector is the common of course. So, in multi finger devices you carry high current, in, in, in general current densities are pretty high in vertical devices. Okay. So, the high current densities translate to high absolute current when you have multi finger devices. Now, when you have multi finger devices heating will always take place correct, even if you are cooling there will always be some heating that will take place. Now, all these fingers will not uniformly heat, one of these fingers will start having a slightly higher temperature than the others. It is a non-uniform, it is a non-linear thing, okay? you cannot predict exactly. There are of course, modern tools today, but still one finger will start heating up because of the non-uniform way in which the heat might be distributed the, and the junction potential, the parasitics, etc., etc. So, one of the one of the fingers will start heating up. So, what will happen one, one, one finger heats up, one finger heats up the temperature rises okay then your uh, barrier to the back injection the barrier to the back injection e to the power delta e v by k t becomes weaker which means with higher temperature with higher k t assume the delta e v stays the constant the band gap difference does not change as much with temperature. So, when you rise when you raise the k t the temperature of the device I mean because it is heating up uh, your if this is your emitter and this is your base, this is your abrupt base, the holes that are going to be back injected there is a barrier here no, that effect of that barrier starts to reduce with higher temperature. If the effect of the barrier starts to reduce at higher temperature, it means your gain, your, it means your back injected current will be now increasing which means your gain will reduce, okay. your gain will reduce and if your gain will reduce then your collector current IC will decrease this is the reason why this is coming up. In it is not only about one finger, all fingers will heat up although one finger will heat up even more eventually I will come to that, but all fingers will generally heat up. It is not like the other fingers are cool and one finger is hot, all fingers will heat up, but one finger will heat up more and that I will come to in the next slide, okay. but all fingers will generally heat up. So, because of this heating up the barrier to the back injection the effect of that reduces because the KT is high and because of that beta reduces and because beta is reduced your collector current decreases because your input current IB is held constant, you are injecting the constant input current in a common emitter. Okay, here. So, if your collector current drops that is what precisely is happening here NDR, it is a heating effect where your gain is decreasing and your current is dropping. Now, what is the reason for the collapse of current gain here? 
you can see this is a much dramatic current gain drop the drop in the current. What happens is that as I told you one finger will start heating up more ok. One finger will start conduct more current as the temperature rises above the ambient ok. So, you have multiple fingers here suppose these are emitter ok these are emitter fingers and then you have the base finger of course in between them just focus on the emitter here for instance for the part here ok. So, what will happen is that one emitter current one emitter stripe will start to conduct more current suppose this is the nth finger. So, I see n. So, this nth finger will start conducting slightly more current than the others if it slides if it starts conducting slightly more current than the others it will also heat up slightly more than the others ok. It will slightly heat up more than the others and even if all the fingers are identical they in identical in dimension identical in shape everything still one finger will heat up more one finger will basically conduct more current ok. And eventually what will happen is that that finger will try to siphon or suck away the current from all other fingers one finger will try to suck off the current from all other fingers and the temperature will rise really high ok. The other fingers become dormant what is meant by that is that the all the other fingers will start feeding elect, uh, current to only one finger the, the main finger ok and that finger will carry all the current ok and the temperature will rise really high. And because of that significant increase in temperature the beta will fall abruptly very much which means your current IC will also fall abruptly very much and that is what is happening here the current is falling off very abruptly we call it collapse of the current current gain ok collapse of the current gain. So, what is happening is that one finger is starting to conduct more current as the temperature is rising and this happens even if all the fingers look identical ok and eventually that finger will start carrying all the current and it will heat up much more and lead to a collapse of the current gain because the beta reduces dramatically re leading to a dramatic reduction in the collector current that is why this falls off very you know abruptly ok. And the expression of the current uh, collector current or you can say the locus of this you know is given by this expression where this is the base emitter junction voltage this is the temperature this is the ambient temperature this is that actual temperature that is rising and this phi there is a minus sign in front of that phi is some kind of coefficient it is like the thermoelectric feedback coefficient that is about 1.1 millivolt per degree Celsius rise of temperature. So, if you have 100 degree Celsius of rise of temperature you have 1 1 0 0 millivolt or 1.1 volt ok this will be 1.1 volt for a 100 degree Celsius rise. So, that is a lot of change in the uh, uh, voltage ok. So, that leads to a dramatic reduction in the current gain ok this is a collapse of the current gain and this is not a destructive breakdown you can come out of this collapse of the current gain by reducing the bias condition reduce coming to the lower current condition if you come back to this regime again you will recover the device the device has not undergone undergone a destructive or catastrophic failure because the beta is low it is not a positive feedback or it is not a thermal runaway because the current has reduced no it is not a thermal runaway your current has significantly reduced ok. And so, you can come out of this condition by just biasing it at lower voltages so that uh, you can recover the device ok. And uh, the locus of this point you know this locus of this point which means this point where the collapse is happening you know this point where the collapse is happening you know in this in this case the locus this locus that is given by this expression where you can see that. Uh, this is the, the threshold for the current collapse condition it depends on the collector emitter bias also it also depends on the emitter resistance per finger this is per finger remember and the this is thermal resistance per finger. So, what it means is that if your emitter resistance is higher ok if your emitter resistance is higher it means this quantity uh, is lower this quantity is lower correct it is like A minus B where B is increasing. So, this quantity becomes lower if this quantity becomes lower this quantity becomes higher which means this quantity becomes higher which means if initially if you can increase the emitter resistance by some means without increasing the emitter resistance you had something like this this red color curve that I am drawing ok. However, with if you increase the emitter resistance somehow then you can increase this 
current collapse uh, the I mean not the collapse of the current gain threshold can be pushed and it will be somewhere here. It means you are pushing the start or the onset of the collapse of the current gain which means you have a larger window to which you can operate that is a good thing. So, the way to delay the onset of the collapse of the current gain is to intentionally increase the emitter resistance. Okay. So, this emitter resistance can be intentionally increased by adding an extra resistance such as a tantalum nitride resistor can be added as a series to the emitter contact. This will increase the overall emitter resistance and this will increase the overall IC collapse threshold which means you have a larger window in which the current collapse has not or the collapse of the current gain has not happened. This is a good thing, but the emitter resistance is high. So, your parasitic resistance is high. So, it will affect your cutoff frequency FT will be low, but that is a trade off that you have to pay anyway. This collapse of the current gain is not the same as the current collapse in gallium nitride or gallium arsenide FET. That is trapping, detrapping, virtual gate and a new account and a dispersion that is a different physics, different concept in lateral device. This is a collapse of the current gain where the beta drops dramatically leading to a dramatic reduction in the collector current because one finger will eventually carry all the current. One finger will start to carry more current, it will heat up more, it will carry more current and eventually all the fingers will start feeding current to that only and the other fingers will carry very minimal current and only one finger will carry everything that is why the current collapse happens okay, on the collapse of the current gain happens. This addition of the extra resistor to the emitter to mitigate this effect is called the emitter ballast. This is called the emitter ballast the extra series resistance you are adding. Sometimes you can add the series resistor to base also to have the same effect it is called the base ballast. Okay. Base ballast is also used. Okay. Base ballasting also can help improve the, the ballasting condition or this collapse of the current gain to some extent. Okay. Now, here is a very interesting uh, concept in a compound semiconductor HBT the gain beta decreases with increasing temperature. Why I already told you because the back injected holes the barrier to the back injected holes it goes as delta E V by K T in an abrupt junction delta E V stays constant with higher temperature to first order, but K T increases significantly right. So, with higher K T with higher temperature your back injected holes will be more where the barrier to the back injection is reduced leading to a reduction in beta because your I B back increases. That is why beta decreases with a rising temperature in HBT and this is a good thing in some way because with higher temperature your beta reduces. So, your current also reduces you know like this current also reduces. So, you never have something like a thermal runaway. What it means is that uh, you do not burn the device you do not catastrophically destroy the device because the at higher temperature here here the current is low the lower beta reduces the current although the temperature is rising it reduces the current and reduction in current will reduce the temperature reducing the temperature will again lead to the increase of current and increase of current will lead to this entire cycle. So, eventually it will reach an equilibrium where there is a low current and some some equilibrium temperature maybe 120 degrees Celsius or 150 or something and there will be low current. So, there is no thermal runaway and beta is low as the temperature is increased. However, in a silicon BJT only in silicon BJT beta increases with increasing temperature. Now, if beta increases with increasing temperature this is terrible because with higher temperature suppose I have a temperature from ambient is say 30 degrees Celsius my temperature increases to 60 degrees Celsius because the higher current no it is heating up the chip is heating up. Because of higher temperature if I had a beta of say 20 here I will have a beta of say 25 here that is a crazy thing at higher temperature I have a higher gain. If I have a higher gain then I will have higher current if I have higher current then I will have higher temperature 60 will become 80 and at 80 the beta will become say 30. If the beta is increasing the current will increase even more if the current increases even more then the temperature will increase, increase because the current directly increases the temperature. So, 80 will become 100 degree at 100 degree the beta may become 45 and at such high beta the current will increase even more that current will lead to 120 degree Celsius it is a positive feedback cycle it is called thermal runaway. And if you do not set a limit or a compliance to this the thermal runaway will catastrophically and irrecoverably damage your silicon BJT. Because with higher temperature the current is rising 
and the higher temperature is favorable to the current increase and the current increase is favorable to high temperature. So, that positive feedback loop will blow the device. So, it is catastrophic that does not happen in compound semiconductor HBT because the beta reduces with temperature. As I told you HBT can be biased out of the collapse by lowering just the VC you, you just come from this point to this point and you can recover the entire IV no problem, but in silicon BJT you are gone. Now, the basic question is why is that the beta or the gain increases with increase in temperature in silicon BJT. Okay. This has got to do with the fact that in silicon BJTs typically the emitter is very highly doped and because the emitter is very highly doped there is a band gap narrowing in emitter. Okay. So, because of this band gap narrowing in emitter with higher temperature with higher temperature your beta will increase because the beta depends on e to the power minus delta E g by k t where delta E g is the band gap narrowing. It is a very bad relation I understand with more band gap narrowing your beta will be killed I understand that. Okay. So, with higher temperature this quantity is reduced which means this quantity is increased because there is a negative sign. So, that is why beta is increasing with higher temperature and that is a terrible terrible thing to happen in BJT. Okay. So, with that we will end the lecture here today uh, this was the conclusion of lecture 47 we will still have one or two more lectures on bipolar devices, uh, but today we talked about uh, in more details about compound semiconductor HBT and collapse of current gain uh, emitter ballast uh, ballasting effect and how in silicon uh, there, there can be thermal runaway, but how in compound semiconductor HBT you do not have the thermal runaway. So, that difference is very very pertinent in high power uh, RF devices. Okay. So, with that thank you for your time I will see you in lecture 48 next. Okay. Thank you.